What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So some of you may have seen it yesterday, but SketchUp put out a blog post talking about some of the changes that they've made to the 3D warehouse. And I think some of these changes were long overdue and I wanted to go through them a little bit with you in this video. And um, before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to uh, bring basically everything that I'd cover in a two-day training to an online course course so um, you can get access to that for a lot cheaper than an in-person training and you can also have access to that long term so if that's something you're interested in uh, that's available for pre-order right now um, between now and February 28th that is available for 40% off and you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course now let's go ahead and just jump into it so like I said before, a blog post came out on SketchUp's website. Um, the blog post itself is about a week ago, but they just shared it yesterday and I saw it, and it's talking about some of the changes they made to search in the 3D warehouse. So I thought I'd go through those changes with you in this video. So as most of you know, you can access the 3D warehouse by going up to File, 3D Warehouse, Get Models. And so that'll pop up the 3D warehouse, and you can also just click on the 3D warehouse button right here. But Basically what that'll pop up is that'll pop up this landing page right here um, And this hasn't changed where this they just show some of the kind of highlighted models that sort of thing um, But what's changed is some of the search features and uh, Historically some of you may know that finding what you want in the warehouse has been a little bit challenging So I was excited to give this a try and so what you can do is you can start by the real changes start showing up when you search for an object. So let's say for example that I came in here and I just wanted to search for, let's say I wanted to find a tree. So I wanna find a tree that I can bring into my model. You can see this looks a little bit different than it did before. So some of the things that were there before are still there. So you can sort by relevance, popularity, um, most liked titles and dates usually you're probably going to use the popularity mostly um, because a lot of the time the best stuff is fairly popular and so you can kind of find stuff that works by looking at what other people have downloaded however there's a lot of different things in here that we're going to have to look through in order to find the right model and before we do that I will note the collections tab is still here so I can click on collections and I can look for collections of objects so I can look for collections of trees. So these are like groups of models that you can use or that you can go through. So instead of just finding one tree and clicking on it, you can find a collection that looks like it has what you want and then you can go through that. So the collections option is still there as is models. And so the big changes that happened happened over to the left over here. And so if you remember, um, a lot of this actually isn't new. A lot of this was actually, you could find it in the advanced search, but it was really hard to find. And I don't think a lot of people knew about it. And so it made things really difficult to find things in SketchUp. But you can see how now over to the side, you can add keywords to your search. So you can adjust your search. So I could change this to low, or let's say, that I wanted to look for a willow tree. So I could add the word willow to this um, and add to my search. And you could do that without having to go back in and just redo your entire search. And so you can add and remove different things. So you could remove the word tree so that you just have willow. Um, so that's the first thing is just being able to add and remove keywords makes this a lot faster. So the second thing, and one of the things that you're probably going to use a lot of, is you're probably going to use the file size and complexity sliders. And these existed before in the advanced search, but what you had to do is you had to type in a value. And so you could type in the maximum number of polygons, but if you were like me, you had no idea what that meant and what level of polygons that you wanted. You know, I mean, is a thousand polygons too many or is it not nearly enough? Is 20,000 too many? Like nobody really knew, but what they've done instead now is now they've given you this slider so that you can slide this across here really quickly and really easily. And honestly, I'm not gonna use the polygons one probably as much as I'm gonna use the megabytes. Because I know, for example, that bringing in a 20 megabyte tree is probably going to slow my model down. So I'm probably going to use this file size slider a lot more. But you can use this, you can drag it all the way off to the left, and you can tell it, I don't want you to show any trees that are any bigger than 2 megabytes. And so now the things that you can bring in are going to be, these are all objects that are less than two megabytes so you can see by mousing over them and looking at this number the size of the file so this is a one megabyte this is a 416 kilobyte 
So you can use that to really kind of uh, limit the stuff that shows up in the search to things that you're actually going to use. And you can also use this uh, you can use this drop down in order to help with that. So you can see how I can take this and I can look for the most liked or the most popular over here in conjunction with my file size slider. So that makes it really easy to find things that are going to work in your models. So a couple of the other things that they've added over here is you can now search for manufacturer models. And so what that means is you can actually search for models that are going to show up by someone that actually manufactures the equipment. So trees is a bad example. So let's go in here and let's look for, um, we'll call it sink. So we can look for a sink in here. We can do a search for that. And then we can click the little option for manufacturer model. And what that's going to do is that's going to pop up models that are by SketchUp, but it's also going to pop up models that have been put in here by the actual manufacturers of the material. So like for example, these are Kohler sinks and Kohler has uploaded those. And so you can pull down models that are certified from a manufacturer and that's very useful because a lot of the time what you want when you bring these into your model is you want them to be the right size um, so you want to bring that in and you you're really using it for actual visualization and measuring and that kind of thing and so you know when you get those from the manufacturer that they're gonna be actually to the scale of the actual product itself so being able to search for manufacturer models is really helpful so in addition, you can also come in here and search for dy dynamic components. Dynamic components are components that have specific attributes that you can edit. So like for example, a window is usually a good bet on this because there's a lot of dynamic window components that you can download into your models that'll adjust or that'll allow you to adjust them without changing the scale of the objects. And I will note that one thing that's going to be important for you to use dynamic um, objects is you need to be able to go into your uh, window extension manager and you need to make sure the extension for dynamic components is enabled otherwise this won't work. And so then what you can do is you can just uh, right click on these and you can go down to dynamic components and you can go down to component options. And so a lot of these, what they've done is they've built them so that you can adjust things like the frame width and the frame height. So like, let's say we make this a 72 inch frame and then we click apply. What that'll do is that'll automatically adjust this window without um, scaling it and distorting it. But there's a lot of other 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 options in here as well like window screens and other things like that you can adjust the number of window lights and so this can make your life a whole lot easier when you're working with things like windows but you can search for those now within the 3d warehouse and then the next thing you can look for is geolocated models or models that have a location associated with them so like for example if i wanted to look for the burj dubai which is the big tall building within uh, or over in dubai you can see there's a whole bunch of different models in here, but a lot of the time what you want to do for various reasons is you want to bring in a model that's actually geolocated, that actually has like a real world location. So what you can do is you can click the little button for geolocated and that will sort this so that these are only models that have a location associated with them. And so you can kind of double check on this when you bring this model over by clicking on the little location button, the view on map, that'll show you what the geolocation has been or what the geolocation is for this model. However, one thing I'm really not liking about this is when you bring this in, it doesn't geolocate your model. I think what you can do though, and this is actually a trick for working in the 3D warehouse, is when you click download, it's gonna ask if you wanna load this directly in your SketchUp model. If you click no, then what it's gonna do is it'll allow you to save this model if you click no. So you can um, you can basically save this file in a location of your choosing. And so I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. And then I believe if you go back in and you open that, 
then that'll be geolocated. So you can't just download this into your model and have it be geolocated, but you can download it and then open the model itself. And one of the benefits of that is when your model is geolocated, you can come into the components section of your tray and you can click the little drop down next to the house and click on nearby models. And my internet is terrible, so sometimes it just thinks that I don't have internet for some reason but you can click the nearby models option and nearby models will show up down here if you have a better internet connection that should work just fine and then one of the other things that got that's now in here and i think it, i think all of these were in the advanced search before but now you can actually find them and use them but one of the things that i'm really excited about is the ability to search for plants or um to search for specific authors within the 3D warehouse. So like for example, I keep coming back, SketchUp has created a lot of different um, great like 2D and 3D plant models and that sort of thing. I always had trouble finding them because um, I was always searching for um, collections and having to go through all this different stuff. Well what you can do is you can enter the author name so I could type in SketchUp. And so when I type in SketchUp, what that allows me to do is that allows me to search for plants created by SketchUp. So I can find the models and I can also find the collections in here. So being able to search for things created by a specific author is a really good function. And you can search for the specific title of the object as well. I don't think I'm really going to be doing too much of that. But just uh, being able to find the stuff by the author is going to be super helpful to me. And then the last thing you can do is you can search for modified date. Um, I'm not 100% sure why you would care um, for this one because I don't really care when a model was modified, but maybe there's maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe newer models, people are modeling with better uh, modeling practices or something. But And then there, there were two tips. Since we're here, I wanted to tell you two useful tips for working in the 3D warehouse. So the first is... Um, save things that you like to your collections or like them and so when you do that like for example let's say I like this trees 2d 2015 collection by SketchUp what you can do is you can create your own collection of things so like for example I have a collection that I've created of different plants that I'm going to use over and over and over again I just want to be able to find them real easy well you can add things to those collections by clicking add to collection that'll bring up a list of your collections and in this case I can click on trees and vegetation and you can see this had a checkbox by it so this collection was already in there but then I'm gonna click done well now you can go into your drop down and you can go to your my 3d warehouse and you can look under collections and all of the things that you've saved to that collection will show up in this list. So, and then the other thing is, in addition, if you like something, so maybe you don't wanna create your own collection, but maybe you like a collection. If you click the little like button next to that collection, so if you click this little heart, then that'll show up in your liked collections, and then you can find it again really quickly and really easily. So the other thing I wanted to talk about, and I've done a video about this before, is you can now import materials from SketchUp models into your model directly. So like for example, let's say that I wanted to bring in this wood barrel material. Well, if you go over to the materials word, you can see how when I mouse over it, it turns red. And I wish they'd make a note over here that says this. But if you click on materials, what that'll allow you to do is that'll allow you to download any of these materials into your model without having to download the actual model itself. So like, let's say I just wanted this wood texture, I could just click download. And that'll automatically get brought into your materials so you can apply it to your model. So those are just two tips that are going to make your life a lot easier when working in the 3D warehouse. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. I know they didn't add a whole bunch of functions as much as make them more visible, but I think this is going to be a really good thing um, for helping people find things that they need in the 3D warehouse. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think, though. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month so please make sure to check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys